Right now, every country in the world is undergoing a constitutional and financial crisis. We, the people, are living under a deception regarding our political and civil character and status with regards to the financial system, banks, corporations, courts and governments. In every educational workshop on people's rights, the vote is unanimous that the current system of governance is no longer based on the will of we, the people, each according to their own level of truth. In the words of Vladimir Putin in his UN address on the 28th of September 2015, instead of the triumph of democracy and progress, we got violence, poverty and social disaster. Nobody cares a bit about human rights, including the right to life. After five years of research into the payment systems of the world, the United Common Law Grand Jury of Southern Africa, UZA for short, have discovered sufficient logical proof that the financial system has been hijacked by an elite group of banksters and that the world is in fact operating under an inherently fraudulent US-dominated monetary system. In reality, this system is operating under revolving foreclosure bankruptcy as every country has an insolvency act. The truth is that money is merely an IOU, as declared by the Bank of England in their second quarterly report of 2015. It was Henry Ford who stated, It is well enough that the people of the nation do not understand our banking and monetary system, for if they did, I believe there would be a revolution before tomorrow morning. In fact, it is we, the people, that are the real sureties, the true creditors, the priority claimants and shareholders of our countries. Our legalized names are being fraudulently used in breach of trust and good faith to foment this plot of man-made poverty against ourselves. Value does not lie in fictitious fiat paper currency. The only value lies in the sweat of people's labor and the natural resources of their lands. It was Nelson Mandela who said, poverty is not an accident. Like slavery and apartheid, it is man-made and can be removed by the action of human beings. The financial system was designed to rob people of their birthright, labor and resources in a global Ponzi scheme whereby the wealth trickles upwards, leaving the people destitute, disenfranchised and impoverished beyond redemption. The power of banking and the exchange of gold and silver were originally in the hands of the people and must be restored to the people. We must return to prudent banking, such as the Glass-Steagall Act of 1932 and 1933. Only interest-free, value-based currency and community banks by the people, of the people and for the people can and will provide a proper remedy. Fraud invalidates everything and there is no statute of limitations on fraud. A full debt forgiveness is in order for all people as well as the return of their fraudulently repossessed property. Central banks belong to the people and must be nationalized. Nationalization of corporations exploiting natural resources is imperative and must be audited back to the beginning. A national people's trust must be established by the law of the land for their natural heirs, namely we, the people, and used only for social and environmental restitution. All roads lead to Rome. The entire worldwide court system has its roots in the ecclesiastical courts of the Holy See. During the fraudulent so-called Age of Discovery, millions of indigenous people worldwide have suffered and died through the wars, forced resettlement, disease and conquest justified by two papal orders or bulls, called Romanus Pontifex, 1455. These papal bulls are the blueprints since they granted explorers the absolute right to invade, search out, capture, vanquish and subdue all Saracens and Pagans whatsoever and other enemies of Christ wheresoever placed and to reduce their persons to perpetual slavery. Not only that, but in 1302 the Holy See under Pope Boniface VIII had the brainstorm of creating a global estate trust under a papal bull called Unam Sanctum placed all people, their lands and even their souls into one ruling trust. That trust is the largest corporate conglomerate and interlocking trust directorate on the earth, with four administrative hubs 
operated as independent international city-states. That trust provides services and operates out of the Vatican, Westminster, Washington DC and the United Nations. Together these four cities create the empire of the city, but it's really an empire of global estate trusts and we are all part of it, like it or not. The courts. Contrary to popular belief, courts worldwide and their offices, in fact, operate under this same Roman system and use the laws of the sea, such as admiralty law or civil law or maritime law or law merchant. The offices of these courts belong to bar associations and law societies and are, in fact, knights and soldiers oaths to H.M. the Queen which is a secret society and not to be confused with the living woman, namely Mary of Windsor. The rules of these sea courts, in fact, only have jurisdiction over legal fictions and the contracts between them. The officers of these sea courts use a language called legalese, which sounds like English, yet is deceptively different. By comparing original law dictionaries to current ones, one will see how the definitions of words are being changed to suit the needs of the powers that were to dumb the people down and to reduce themselves to slaves yet again. These sea courts use semantic deceit under color of law to change people's civil and political character and status from the living laws of the land into the jurisdiction of the sea by press-ganging the people to admit to their registered legal fiction names. In this way, people are being reduced to the same status as fictitious corporations and governments which are then able to plunder the people, their labor and natural resources. The truth is that lawfully, these courts have no jurisdiction on the land. The good news is that we the people have unalienable rights which were established and passed down by ancient precedents, unenacted common law, oral customary law, maxims, old authorities and by the original definition of words. In the hierarchy of laws, the first law is divine law, from which is derived natural law, and from that flows people's law. People in turn created pieces of paper called corporations and governments to provide them with services and ensure their freedoms, rights and protections of their private property. Corporations and government have no jurisdiction to lord over people. The UZA is a people's court of conscience which was decreed and established in 2013 according to the law of the land. UZA is taking representative administrative action on behalf of we, the people, to re-establish people's courts on the land where all are equally accountable as peers and no longer will criminals be able to hide behind corporations or governments. UZA has exhausted seeking remedy with the Constitutional Court of South Africa in our case of UZA versus the Republic of South Africa. We claim that the court is acting outside of its mandate to develop the common law and customary law as a constitutional obligation. They are clearly failing in their duties. UZA has transferred this matter for good cause before the International Tribunal for Natural Justice which was established in 2015 to redress the harm and loss inflicted upon people. If our case succeeds, it will set a precedent for people's courts. A precedent can be used by the people of other nations in similar actions for themselves within their own countries. How can you help? We, the people of the land of Southern Africa, have drawn our line in the sand and we are challenging the unconstitutional actions of our constitutional courts. The remedy we are seeking from the ITNJ is restoration of our people's courts, funded by the government of South Africa. From there, our own people's courts will be able to issue a moratorium on foreclosures, conduct investigations into fraudulent banking practices, and hold truth and reconciliation hearings. The case is crowdfunded by the people, Please stand with us and contribute to court costs. Your contribution supports all of us to reclaim our sovereignty and our birthrights. The third and final directions hearings before the ITNJ has now been funded, paid for in due early April. And if the case succeeds, 
the trial will be set down to be heard in Soweto by public hearing. Your contribution will help make this happen. We, the people of the land of Southern Africa, are holding an interim referendum and require 50,000 wet ink signatures for change. Download the document which has space for a hundred names. The question is simple. Is the current system of governance based on the will of the people? Anyone who says no should support the referendum. United we stand.